someone who looks up to you or your family member in any way. Now imagine this young girl comes to you one day and tells you that not only has she been abused sexually by her teacher in school, whom she trusts, the official who is supposed to serve as a check on that teacher has told her not to tell anyone what has happened to her. This is the story of a young girl in Obwase Senior High Technical School, 17-year-old, allegedly abused by a 46-year-old, and then allegedly coached by a GES official who told her to deny that this housemaster forcibly had sex with her. Head of Investigation Terra Joy News, Manasseh Azuriawoni, has been following this story, but this is even more worrying because teachers in the school have formed an association and they have written a petition to the GES saying that there are too many romantic relationships between teachers and students in the school. And so those children are exposed to HIV AIDS. Yeah. This is because a teacher died of that disease two years ago. My question to you is that what would you do if someone you know or someone you love came to you with this story? Listen. The moon is so the matches now have to a form and not a time like I say at that moment now say you lose 46 year old said Amponsa has admitted the girl swept his office and studied there at night. He also admitted buying food from town for the girl and intervening when a senior seized her phone, but he denies sexually assaulting her. Some teachers of the school, however, say sexual relationship between teachers and students of the school has become a ritual. Joy News has cited a petition written by a group of teachers calling itself Concerned and Patriotic Teachers of Obuasi Senior High Technical School. The petition, which was written in July and addressed to the municipal chief executive, alleged that the school authorities wanted to shield Mr. Amponsa and called for the intervention of the MC. The victim of the alleged sex assault has told Joy News, an officer from the GES, David Baba Afubi, invited her into a meeting and told her not to cooperate with investigative bodies. They asked about the case and I narrated it to them. The complex JHS head asked what I wanted done about the case. I said I wanted the teacher punished because I was not the only victim. Mr. Mambo rebuked me saying mine was the only that was out and I had no evidence of the rest. The GES officer told me if anybody asks about the case, I should say I just didn't like the teacher. That's why I accused him of sexually abusing me. He said that would kill the case and my education will not be affected. The head teacher of Complex Junior High School in Obuasi, Aaron Boafo, and the senior housemaster of Obuasi Sectec, Yakub Mambo, were present at this meeting. They confirmed the meeting was held in Mr. Mambo's house, but denied the GS official tried to scuttle the investigation. Aaron Boafo said, Mr. Afubi advised the girl not to cooperate with outsiders such as the media and not the GES officials. The MP for Obwasi East, Dr. Patrick Boachi Yadom, who is an old student of Obwasi Sectech, says the sex scandal which has become public is a tip of the iceberg. There's widespread rumor on campus that not one male tutor, not two male tutors. I think what I heard was about more than 20 male tutors on campus who are alleged to be indulging in these immoral acts with the female students. And I, I felt this should not be allowed to happen uh, on campuses of our second cycle institutions. These are young students, young females, they are vulnerable. And you can't use exam threat uh, will, will help you to pass and woo these young vulnerable girls into these acts. According to the teachers who petitioned the MCE, when a male teacher of the school died of HIV AIDS complications two years ago, there was panic in the school because teachers often passed the girls around. They warned the GES and stakeholders of the school to take a decisive action 
to end all forms of sexual relationship between girls and teachers of the school. Manas Azria Wunis reports that he's head of investigations here at Joy News and Manasse is with us in the studio. Good morning, Manasse. Good morning, Dan. I wish we could have been meeting under better circumstances. Well, it's part of the job, so... Yes, yes, yes. And Enimua Enimado is also here, usual suspect. Good morning, Enimua. Good morning, Daniel. In the first place, Manasse, you spoke with this girl and she told you this story. How did it come to you in the first place? Uh, somebody alerted me and the reason I was alerted was that there was suspicion that when the I incident happened, the school authorities didn't want to be fought right with it. Uh, they got the teacher, from what I heard, he confessed, he did it, and from there there were feet dragging. These are the allegations I heard and somebody said if the media doesn't come in, they suspected this would be one of the cases because they said there have been some similar cases in the past, some intern, some national <coughs> service personnel, and the punishment will be just to ask you to go away. So they suspected this was going to be one of them. So I had to go to Obuasi, uh, Kumasi, and try to speak to almost everybody who was involved in this case. The headmaster who was there at the time is on retirement, but he said, well, he didn't intend to undermine the investigation. I also spoke to the teacher who is uh, accused. He said the sex uh, did not happen. He actually took me to the office where the incident was supposed to have taken place and his uh, argument was that, look, I have a car, there are hotels in town. If I wanted to do that to the girl, I would have taken her to a hotel and that this place as we stand does not uh, appear conducive enough for a man to have erection and have sex with a girl here. That was his excuse. The girl said a number of things about their relationship and he confirmed almost everything. One, he had asked her to sweep his office. Two, he had also asked her to study in his office. Three, he bought food for the girl and sometimes gave her money. The lady or the girl also said uh, when the incident happened and the teacher, could he she tried to hide from the teacher. She wasn't studying in the office again, so she was at prep, uh, the evening studies one evening, and this teacher came and called her out and said, why don't I see you again? And she said, well, I'm not well. So she just tried to give an excuse. I said, okay, now if I want to give you something or engage you, how do I do that? I have a phone. Take this phone, and I'll be calling you through the phone. And this girl said, a senior student, a name was even given, ever seized this phone because the uh, girls or students were not allowed to use mobile phones on campus. And the teacher went ahead to confront the senior, took the phone, and brought it back to this girl. Now the teacher is the denying that he gave the phone to the girl but he said he actually intervened and took the phone a phone back to the girl and that a girl may have taken the phone from his office because he had seized a number of phones from students and kept them in his office now the question is why would he be seizing Manasse, let me be clear on that story he says that he did not take the phone from that student who uh, seized the phone from this girl in, in question? No, that one he admitted. Okay. The student uh, is a senior who is still in school okay. by name Najat Ibrahim. She seized the phone. And then this teacher went and confronted the senior, Okay. took the phone, and returned it to the girl he was, or he's alleged to be having and an what affair what was his with. story? His story is that, well, the girl said the phone was uh, her sister's phone, and because he didn't want uh, them to have issues at home, that was why he had to intervene and take this phone for the girl. So I asked, okay, you don't allow girl, students to use phones. Why did you have to even be calling this girl? Oh, the girl often went home and uh, I wanted to check up on her and all of that. So apart from the sex, almost every other thing the girl told us in this story, the teacher confirmed it. Great. Manasse, let's go back to the beginning of the story that she, you're telling me because a few parts of it are incredulous, if you ask me. In the first place, you said the teacher confessed earlier and that it's on that basis that you were called in. So this confession was not made to you. But what did he confess to? Do we know? I actually spoke to a management member of the school. Good. And that when the incident happened, 
this is how the whole scandal came out. The issue has been happening. It, it's like a common secret that everybody talks about. So the senior housemaster, uh, one Yakubu Mambo, was on the school pitch and overheard two girls chatting. And the conversation was like, well, the way these teachers now sleep with the girls is becoming too much. And they were just talking about it. It's normal. So he drew close to these girls and asked. So they started mentioning teachers and the girls they were sleeping with. Some had completed, some were about completing. So that's how the name of this girl and Mr. Set Amponsa, the teacher who stands accused, that's how their names came up. Okay. So he called the Amponsa, who is a housemaster, he denied, and then he reported to the headmaster. And when they called Mr. Amponsa, at the management level, he initially denied, but as the case progressed, I'm told he confessed. And the letter they actually confessed to sleeping with the girl. The girl. The letter the school wrote to the GES or higher authorities, I'm told, contains this confession. Okay. That is uh, how everything came up. You also said that this is something that occurs commonly, as you have described, even conversations. And if we are go to if we are to go by this petition written by the t- teachers in the school, then it's something we can take to the bank. But then I'm curious as to how they are resolved because you said they come up and they say, go away. Go away how? Go away, be suspended or go away, go back to teaching? What happens? From what I gathered, I must say some of the teachers of the school are actually outraged about what is happening. And I spoke to some of them and what they are saying is that sometimes when it even comes up, nobody follows up. But they have been instances that national service personnel and male students who were doing internship there when they were found, they asked them to leave. Sometimes they talk of even transfers. And I'm told this teacher in question even applied to be transferred when the issue was gaining momentum. So the headmaster said, well, let's finish this case before your request for transfer will be granted. So these are some of the ways they resolve this issue. If you are not a permanent teacher, you are asked to go. If you're a permanent teacher, you will be transferred or it doesn't even come up at all. We they hear it and then that's the end of it. So But from what we know, this housemaster is a permanent teacher. He's a housemaster. A housemaster, he's been teaching in the school for the past fourteen years. And before he came, he had taught at uh, Ola Senior High School, Kenya, which is a girls' school. And he one of his excuses was that well, I had taught at Ola for six years before coming here. So if I was into this uh I would have been exposed in a girl's school, so and not so a because school. he was not caught at Ola. It doesn't make sense that he would engage in something like that. That's what that's he what said. he's saying. Yes, in addition okay. to the fact that he could have done it in town in a hotel, or he had keys to one of the assistant headmasters who was not resident on campus, and uh, his house was even far removed from the main campus, so he could have gone there to do it with a girl. So these are some of the excuses he gives for rubbish in the story you were mentioning that investigations were going on and which is why one of the retired headmasters did not even speak to you yes yes um, at what stage are these investigations we uh, i'm re- reliably informed that the uh, teacher in question his lawyer management of the school and the girl and her relatives were summoned to the gs regional office in kumasi and it was there that they met for the second time. I actually went to speak to the regional director of GS in Kumasi, and she, a woman, confirmed that the investigation was being carried out by her outfit and that uh, she wouldn't even speak to us when the investigations were ready. But she assured me that she wasn't going to shield whoever was involved because she was a woman who had children and that if anybody did that to her child, she wouldn't let go. So she wouldn't also sit down for that to happen to another person's child. And she wouldn't take action. Finally, Manasseh, where is this teacher? This teacher, as we speak, is still in school. Obuasi Senior High Technical School. Uh, he had a number of positions. Sports, uh, assistant sports master, examination coordinator and all of that. His positions were stripped and then... Just last week, I had uh, information that he's also been asked to step aside as head, uh, sorry, housemaster 
but he is still a teacher who lives and works on campus. But a girl has uh, dropped out of school because of the stigma when she's walking, people are talking about it. And so she finds it difficult to stay in the school. Manasa Azuri Awuni is head of investigations here at Joy News. And it's 25 minutes past eight. Manasa is still with us in the studio. Any money, Mado is also here. But Dennis A.J. Jumo, um, who is the director at the Center for Juvenile Delinquency, he is also a private legal practitioner, has joined us on the line. Good morning, Dennis. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning to you and your listeners. For want of a better expression, Dennis, it appears there's a breakdown of protection for school children. Yeah, it, it does. And, and uh, once again, this is a disturbing but not a surprising story. There have been times that these issues are coming up, and as the MP himself confirmed, that um, it is a tip of the iceberg, and these are very worrying. Now, the bigger issue that we need to look at is once again, and I have mentioned time and over again, it is what is the legal framework protecting children as victims, especially after such an incident happens. As we speak now, at least all the directives and all our attention and the focus of our discussion has been on punishing the teacher or punishing the, the offender who committed these dastardly acts. That's where our attention is. And then that's the focus of, if you look at the GES, you know, standard of treating some of these issues, it's about dealing with the offender. Let's ask GES, let's ask the Minister for Women and Children Affairs, what is the status quo or the legal protection that we are going to, what are these kids going to go through? The child who, who gave... Who, who gave the testimony to Manasi? What is, what is going to be done to protect him? Is there a system in which somebody, when you are abusing a school, have an opportunity to, to automatic transfer to another school? Is that, is that something like that? As we speak, there is, there is nothing like that. So the kid will be stuck in the school. They have to go through the entire three years being tagged, having, having a teacher boyfriend. And believe you me, sometimes we all know, some people also make, we read some of the reports, they make accusations of these girls. And I always say that, how many of our women who are matured now did not go through that process? And when they have now become matured, how many of them have been able to voice out and be confident about how this young girl has done? Very few women do that. And, and in any event, when we decide to punish the offender, remember, and Manasi has experience in that, when it comes to our criminal jurisprudence, a person can be left out on grounds of technicality. So you can take the teacher to the trial, if the police does not prepare the docket well, if they do not charge him well, although the incident might have happened, the person will still go out and will be scot free. Even if they gather the evidence, the intent of the confidence, because the law, remember that the burden of proof does not become any lower on grounds that the, 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 the one, the complainant, or the victim is a child. The state still has to prove beyond all reasonable doubt. And so if there is doubt in the prosecution's case, the truth of the matter would have been that the incident happened. But because they could not prove their case, the offender still goes away. And remember that in terms of going through a criminal, a criminal trial in Ghana, as I've come to observe and experience, there's a serious economic factor. And no criminal trial in Ghana, if it goes through the full trial, will take less than six months. And so in terms of all these periods, the child has to come and give testimony. Anytime he comes and gives testimony, I say it once again, the child will miss school. The mother who bring along the child will also miss work. What is the state doing to compensate them? The child is not given a clinical psychologist. Now remember that when we go to court, the child felt comfortable in communicating in the local language to Manasseh. The child could have spoken English, but, but in terms of the narration of it, he felt comfortable. When we go to court, our structure has been made in such a way the child has to speak in the local language and has to be translated. In terms of translation, there can be an instance where you miss the import of the translation. So there's a total lack of text. The laws appear to be there, but the, in, in terms of the laws, it's about dealing with the offender. It does not focus on protecting the child. So if so it Dennis, happens, mm, yeah. Dennis. Before you finish this point, if we want to shift the focus from the offender to the victim, yes. where must we begin? 
we must begin first of all, first of all, by ensuring that the GES comes out together with the Minister for Women and Children Affairs and the stakeholders involved come out with a child protection policy in which we will describe when such an incident happens in categorical terms what is going to happen how does the child complain who can he complain with how do we protect the identity of the child how do we boost their confidence so that nothing happens because as you rightly point this incident has gone too bad to the extent that teachers I also complain about it. Are we going to also ensure that if the GES does its investigation and comes out to a realization that certain teachers were aware but they failed to complain because there's a duty on them to protect the child, there's only one teacher. What punishment will be meted to the teachers who knew of it, they ought to have taken any step, but failed to take any step? The Jusman incident, I believe strongly that before it came to that extent, the headmaster or the headmaster would have been aware of it from day one. What is the punishment to that headmaster who refused to get involved in the procedure? What is the punishment to the teachers in the school who refused to say something? So if the regulation is made where a burden is now put on each of us to ensure that now it is not only about the one who committed the heinous crime, but however, if you also fail to report and the investigation reveals that you fail to report because if it has become rampant, then you ought to know. Or you did not do your duty well, then we need to take a step. Apart from that, how do we get clinical psychologists in the various schools for these children? So that these, if these incidents happen, we will be willing to come out as this lady has done to share her opinion on some of these things. And most importantly, I always say, what is the fund that we are going to give to such people of, 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 uh, of dead victims? We need to have a fund so that the economic aspect, Ask Manasi how much it costs him to travel on his own and go to the school and do this investigation. You guys are aware of it. Now, if we want to go to trial, the kid has to leave school and come. What special protection must we give to the kid? I think that the chief justice should do a special dispensation in which we can have a weekend court. So that if the kid comes and testifies, he will not miss class. So that well, there Dennis, can be a special that can do that. Dennis, unfortunately, because a number of these... Um, policies you suggest have not been implemented already. This girl is not in school. She has already dropped out um, because of the stigma that is on her currently. Oh, quite sad. Quite sad. But, but, but what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, if the Department of Social Welfare was working properly, arrangement would have been made to engage the girl if the, the Minister of Gender and Children Affairs keeps her eyes, ears on the ground and takes picture of attention on it. Once the girl has been dropped and notice has been given to you, we expect the GES to quickly intervene and make arrangement to get the girl another school to go. And that's something that we should ask GES that in such situations, what options are there for? Because if you, if you check for the secondary school system, the, getting a transfer from one secondary school to the other is a very difficult task. If you don't take care, you might even repeat these are things that we should ask GS as we speak. What is the opportunity for a girl who has been abused in one school to be transferred to the other school and ensuring that the child can follow up, uh, you know, going through the, school, the education system? And then I want you to ask all women who come on your show that when they were in secondary school, did they ever hear of some of these? And what did they do from JSS? These are things that some of us have passed through the system and, and always heard of these rumors. What step did we take? Who did we report to? And remember that this thing, apart from these are people, they are going through it as kids, and if you do not take care, the children will see it as normal. That's more reason why when women are abused at their workplaces, they still cannot talk about it because they have suffered abuse from JSS now to the workplace, and they think that, oh, in terms of our social environment, your boss will always call you and want to sleep with you, and I face it as, I, as I'll see how best I can put my female defenses on. But if right. we, the women who happen to be professionals, are working in the working world, cannot complain, cannot stand up to our bosses because we, are, we have the fear of losing our employment. How much more do we expect the kid to be able to complain? So women have to speak up okay. and be bold enough to deal with it. Otherwise, we should leave the kids because the kids, we need special protection for them. But I'm telling you, these kids who suffer abuse, we think right. that it's only about the kids. All of us, they may be married to our family members and they'll be having marital problems because we do not solve that problem. They have psychological issues. So we should look at it not... Just from a very, uh, you know, about this issue. But as I said, 
it's sad, it's not surprising, until we decide to take action, we cannot make any progress. Thank you very much, Dennis A.J. Jumo. Dennis is director at the Center for Juvenile Delinquency. And we will be dealing with these issues a lot more in the coming days, trust me. Um, but let me finish off here with Manasseh, who, has, who brought us this story. Manasseh, in a minute, how is this girl doing? Yes, the girl, as uh, Mr. Jomo said, uh, she will need a lot of psychological help because even the first time they were supposed to go to Kumasi for the hearing, she ran away from the house at dawn because uh, at the beginning she was told that they were going to handle this well. But it got to a time tomorrow, this person is calling her to a meeting, another person. So she said she was afraid. She didn't want her name to travel even beyond uh, where she was. So she actually did not go. She was convinced, and so the second hearing she did. But when we went, she was at home, and uh, the MP who came in, uh, Dr. Patrick Wachiyadom, was saying that they would try to find a way of getting her back to school. And Mr. Jomo also made a very important uh, point about other teachers knowing. This girl, when the teacher first started pestering her, she actually confided in another teacher of the school. I spoke to that teacher. That teacher confirmed the girl confided in her, but she tri he tried to prove further, but the girl was uh, withdrawing. Yeah. So, so forthcoming. Yes. Yeah, so when these things are happening, it is very possible that right. some teachers are aware, and sometimes because of relationships, they find it difficult to report to the authorities. Thank you very much, Manasse. <laughs> It's a very difficult story to do this morning. Our heart goes out to all victims of sexual abuse across the nation in our schools. Because we all know it's not just about Obwasi Senior High Technical School, right? So we're going to stay with the conversation about the girl child. And when we come back from this break, this is what we're going to do. If people are working there and they are not dead, I can go and work there. So, I wanted to see how the place is. So, on my